um, that we purchased. Hey, you need to go and get rid of all of um, all of that garbage frit, uh, all of our Can regular frit. Thing? No, because this is all bot frit. But somebody went and poured all of the other stuff into it. So the pr the frit that we buy, um, all of the cool colors have got what compound in it? It has, yeah, it's like a, I don't know, that stuff that's good for you. Calcium. Not calcium. Not protein. Not, protein. Not, sodium. Not sodium. It's in your notes. You guys can take a look for it if you want. I know you guys are waiting for me to go in it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. So all of all of the transparent colors, even if they're the same colors that we have, have got lead. So here are two examples of a green. Why don't you guys come on over here so you can so you can guys can take a look. The jeweled colors are gonna the um, colors that we purchase are gonna be much more vibrant because of the lead. The colors are going to go and be deeper. These are, um, this is an example of the identical blue, um, the one that we make and then the one that um, we purchased. They're going to have much more of a jewel tone to them. The color is going to be much more saturated and it's going to have a much lower melting point. So when you guys go and pick up the frit that we, um, we purchased, it's going to be easier to go and melt into it. Okay. Now the frit that we purchased, they come in two flavors. You have opaque colors. And you have transparent colors. The opaque colors, what you see is what you're going to get. So when I'm taking a look at this orange right here, this orange, when I go and pick it up, when I um, get it out of the um, annealer, it's going to be pretty much the same color. This opaque jade green is going to be pretty much the same color when I go and pick it out of the um, annealer. All of my transparent colors, they're going to be saturated. They're going to be much more dark than, any, than, my, um, than my opaque colors. A good way to think about these kinds of colors is that the opaque colors, these colors are like acrylic paint. What you see is what you get. The transparent colors, these are like watercolor. And you guys see the raw, raw watercolor, all of that raw watercolor, it looks like all the colors pretty much look the same. They're all just kind of dark. Um, but when you go and add the transparent or um, their transparent color, when you add the white of the paper, you'll be able to go and see that color. Okay. So our transparent colors are the same way. They're really, really, really dark. It's not until you go and add it to a transparent um, or a transparent glass and you start to blow it out that you'll actually be able to go and see it. The, um, all of our colors have a index name and a name. So this jade green, it's got three pieces of information on here. It's got a color index number. In this case, R227. 227. The letter is the color, um, is the factory of origin.
and then there's a color reference number. This will be um, followed by a number. And that number indicates the size of the frit, or how big the particle is. The larger the number, the larger the size. Okay, so an F0 is smaller or finer than an F3. Okay. An example of an F3 would be something like this. F0 or F1 kind of looks like this. It's copper ruby. Okay. Go and heat me up one of the um, punchies. So I'm going to use a color. I'm going to use a color almost exactly the same way that I use a color when I've got my um, my frit. Only this time I don't have to go and grade it. Okay, all right, why don't you guys come on up? So you can go and heat that up for you. This furnace here is our um, is our crystal furnace. This is where all of our clear glass is kept. Um, just um, our finishing up charging charging glass, or just finishing up throwing glass into it. This is an example of a freestanding crucible. So okay, so on the inside of this, this is a very very big version of the um, furnace that you guys have been practicing gathering out of over there. You guys, when you guys gather on this one, you guys will actually be gathering off of the lip of the crucible. This furnace holds about 300 pounds of glass. It's like the small one, except it's a lot bigger. Um, there's a lot more glass. So when you guys go and gather the glass out of out of this furnace, the, the glass is gonna the glass is gonna be perfectly transparent, and um, it's also gonna the furnace act itself is gonna feel hotter. Even though they're at identical temperatures, just because there's more heat, it's gonna feel hotter. Okay. Um, so just when uh, when you guys are gathering out of here, otherwise everything that you guys do for gathering is all all gonna be identical, even though you're going into a different furnace. Um, so don't get tricked out by um, your guys' um, your guys' um, unconscious competencies. This is not a new experience. It's exactly the same as going in to um, the small furnace. All of your procedures are going to be the same. All of the mechanisms and all of the concepts that you use for gathering will remain identical. Okay, but everything is going to be totally different. <laughs> okay. All right, boogie. Right now we've got, um, in our small furnace, we've got it charged up with um, some clear glass and um, I can't go and gather out of here because um, we're still charging it and, and there's um, just the raw glass in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go and take a gather out of the clear furnace. Our transparent glass is um, not tinted like the um, like the color it is okay so our glass is totally transparent it's going to give off this orange color when I go to pick up frit 
I'm going to chase Malcolm around. And I'm going to go and pick up for the exact same way that I have been. Okay. When you guys are using the color that we melt here, at Puno, write this down. It's okay for you guys to go and it's okay to, for you guys to go and, and use that with the cullet. They're all cool colors. Our cullet is a cool color. Not a big deal. When you guys are using um, the colors that we purchased, because of the vibrancy of the colors and because of the kinds of colors that we have, you guys need to make sure that you guys are using our crystal glass. Okay, so I've gone and rolled in some jade green and I've gone and picked up some, um, some fruit on the outside. So this is a, an example of a transparent um, or a, an opaque um, blue. Um, this blue has probably a large amount of um, copper in it, so it's more, it's more of a cyan color. I'll go ahead and um, and pick my color up. And for today's demo, I'm just going to go and show you guys how to go and make this into a paperweight. You guys can go and pick up your color. You guys can go and kind of twist it around and swirl it around. It'll make kind of cool patterns on it. I can go and make some indentations in the glass with my tweezers so I can go and poke some holes in it. Okay, so the first color is the easy color. The first color is never going to be wrong. Second color, that's when things start to get tricky. Okay, so for my second color, I've got, I've got this um, transparent purple that I'm going to go and put over it. And I'm thinking about just having two colors and the two colors that I'm going to be picking up are going to be um, on the same color temperature so they'll be on the cool side. When I go and get my, ga my next gather, um, because the glass is transparent, I'll be able to see through it. Um, when I go and gather over it, because glass has got viscosity, one of the things that's going to happen is that wherever I have an indentation, a little air bubble is going to go and get trapped. Okay, so if you've been wondering how air bubbles are formed, this is how air bubbles are formed in the, on the inside of, um, of um, color. So I'll try to go and get this in, into, the, um, into the camera. You guys can, in the back there, go and see it. Is it on the camera? Yeah, okay. I can also go and pick up some color on the outside of this. So I'm gonna go and pick up some transparent. Once I've gotten all my glass, I can go ahead and throw this into a block.
we'll go ahead and start my neck. And here's where things are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to keep the neck kind of wide. I'm not going to go and neck it down smaller than my, my um, gathering tool. Um, at this point, you guys can go and shape this with the back of your jacks. Um, you guys can decide what shape you want. You guys can go and use your jacks on this shape to go and shape it up. If you guys want to go and make a perfect sphere, this is a sphere tool. It's just a piece of pipe that's attached to a handle. To go and transform my shape into a sphere, a good way to think of what a sphere is, a sphere is a shape that's got an infinite amount of um, circles that are smaller than its equator all over the, or um, diameter all over the piece. So as long as I've got a circle that's smaller than the diameter of my, um, of my, of my shape, I can go and make a sphere. Okay. I'm just going to go and spin this in my sphere making tool. Not really pushing really hard. I'm just going and spinning this shape inside of my tool. And the sphere tool will go and transform my shape into sphere. How's that look? Glass is a good insulator, so the inside of this piece is still very hot. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple of flash heats on here, just some really brief flash heats, just to keep the outside hot. Just want to give the um, inside a chance to cool down. When I go and tap this shape off, instead of tapping it off immediately into the um, into the into the um, annealer, I'm going to go and hang it, and I'm going to let it cool in the annealer. going to hang it in the annealer. So insta instead of tapping it off immediately, I'm like I usually do, I'm going to go and hang it. Okay, why don't you guys follow me? When I go to tap this off, because glass is such a good insulator, if I go and tap this piece off, even though I've been letting it, let it cool down, there's so much heat on the inside that if I go and tap it off, it's going to pick up the texture of the, of the um, vermiculite that's inside of the annealer. So what I'm going to do instead of tapping it off is I'm, all of our annealers have these little hangers back here. I'm just going to go and hang this back here on this hook. Um, we've got a couple of different size punties. Um, this punty is, is, a, is an example of a, um, of a hollow punty, so it's like your blowpipe. The body is hollow, but the tail is solid, and it's got this flared shape. So this punty is a punty that, that if I go and hang it up here, I can go and hang it on this little notch back here, and I can go and let it cool off. Hey, Boogie, you want to get me a regular punty? Want me to just put that in the, in the um, heat it up in the furnace and just bring me a regular punty, regular half inch? You guys go and take a look in here. You guys can see it glowing. When all of the color runs out of it, I'm going to go and tap it off. 
So I'm going to wait for all of the color to run out of it before I go and tap it off. Oh, I forgot to put water on it. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, super important. Don't forget when you guys go and finish your paperweight. In order for me to go and tap off any shape, I need to go and start the crack in my shape. So I need to go and put water on that neck to start the crack, otherwise my piece won't come off. And then I'm gonna go and hang it. And I'm just gonna wait for all of that color to come out. Okay. When you guys are waiting for that to cool off, you guys can just go and, sh and close the door. You guys can go and get a drink of water, reset your bench, check up on it. Um, once it's cooled off, you guys can go and tap it off. Hey Boogie, you got that punty for me? You don't have to heat it up, just, just bring it. You got that pipe ready for me? Yeah. Okay. If you guys have a regular punty, then what you guys can go and do is you guys can use one of these clips and you guys can go and do the same thing. So when I go and hang this one, because it doesn't have that flared end, it's not gonna go, there's nothing to go and grab onto. So I'm just gonna go and grab it with that clip and I can go and hang it, okay? So you guys can go and use any of the um, um, style punties that um, that uh, we have here. Um, the big ones are gonna, you guys won't need to use the clamps. They'll just kind of slot into these um, clips right over here and you guys can just go and hang them. Okay, all right, let's go back outside. problem. Yeah, so that's for paperweight. Um, so the decorative process today that I'm going to go over is Hot color. In a hot color application process, I'm going to have like a hot bit, and it's going to be like a handle. I'm going to go and apply it to a cool parison or parison that's not really moving that much. is going to come as this tapered form and you guys can choose the color frit that you have but you're going to have to have one of the TAs bring it to me. I'm going to go and use the two inch shear straight shear to apply it. The piece that I'm going to go and demo today, um, and this is kind of in preparation for the three cup project, which is a project that you guys can go and design on your own. Um, this project is for a, um, a goblet. So this is one of the forms that you guys can go and maybe choose to explore um, for this shape.
goblet has a couple of different parts to it. The portion that holds the liquid is called the bowl. The bowl has a lip. There's a stem that elevates the drinking portion off the ground. And then the goblet itself is supported by a flat piece of glass called a foot. The goblet, and a way to think about the goblet, is a goblet is an example of a vessel that's made with, that has got bad distribution. So it's a non-standard distribution. So instead of a slightly thicker bottom parison, I'm going to have a parison that's got a very, very, very super thick bottom. Okay, and the stem is going to be the portion of the glass that I'm going to go and use, and I'm going to go and um, use to go and and, um, and I'll use that excess glass at the bottom to go and and make the um, make the um, stem of my piece. So the parison that I'm going to go and start off with is going to be instead of um, my regular one and a half times as tall as it is wide, it's going to be two times as tall as it is wide. And I'll go and throw an, my bubble in it, and it's going to have an extra th amount of thickness on it. Hey, Boogie, you want to go in? Make me a wrap out of that, um, out of the pink. Yeah. Yeah. Start now. Hurry. Okay, so this parison is going to be a little bit extra long. Instead of one and a half times as tall as it is wide, it's going to be two times as tall as it is wide. And all of this excess glass down at the bottom is going to be glass that I'm going to go and use to go and make the stem of my piece. Mark, you want more than that? Yeah, you're going to need at least two or three rolls. No, just, um, just more color. That's great. You can use my glory hole for this. Okay, go and pick up. We don't have to cook the moil. Nobody's going to see the moil. Over here, over here, over here. Okay, 
Okay, go. Check it out. Okay, boogie. Bring it. Keep that. Here, here. Go right in. How do you want me to bring it? Just bring it. Yep. No, just right here. Okay, so one way to go and apply color is you guys can go and kind of just go all around the piece. Okay, but I can go and apply my color and just kind of randomly go and spread it around. Once my color is on here, I'm going to go and take a reheat and I just want to go and even this whole thing out, melt it all in. Pick up the purple boogie. I need more glass than that. I need more glass than that. Start yeah, just start over. Get a double dip. And I'll go and marble this in. This is also something that you guys can also do for your paperweight. So this is not just something that you guys can go and, and do for um, a blown shape. So. You know, any of these decorative processes are suitable for any of the pieces that you guys are working on.
I'll go ahead and smooth it all in. Go ahead and wait to get my next gather. So this color is an example of a copper red or a copper ruby. Um, copper rubies are um, a color, the same color colorant that you can go and use to get turquoise. Um, this colorant um, has a property, and that property is called striking where the color will go and gradually reveal itself as it starts to cool off. Okay, so when I go and heat it up, that color, the, um, the copper ruby will be transparent, but as it goes and cools down, that color will slowly start to go and reveal itself. Remember to keep that, keep that moil cool. It needs to be a longer taper. Get it hot, Boogie, and bring it. Heat it over here. Heat it over here. Heat it over here. Take that. Just hang out with it. It's got to cool down. that. Watch the moil. Yep, you gotta remember you gotta keep it cool. Tail down, tail down. Flip it, flip it, flip no, tail down, tail down, tail down. Okay, the other way that you guys can go and add a trail is you guys can also go and add a trail as a spiral. The reason why I use this pair of straight shears is so I can go and cut the end if I need to. Okay, so I can have that wild kind of free kind of shape that I can go and put on, um, but in hot color, hot color can also be a very, very kind of controlled kind of application of color. I just want to go and smooth out this wrap. And 
and I'm just going to go and smooth it all into my um, into my shape here. I'm going to take a couple of heats just to go and work some heat into that thick spot. When I go to make a goblet, making a goblet is all about controlling viscosity. So it's all about my heat. Hey Boogie, can you get me a pair of round jacks? I'm going to start off by making a snowman, and I'm going to go and start pulling it out of the end. All of that thick glass that I had gone and used is going to be the material that I'm going to go and use for my stem. Now, depending on where the resistance is and when I go and pull, I'll be able to go and work on the different parts of my goblet. Depending on when I pull and when I blow the different parts of the goblet will start to form. got a different pair of jacks over here. This is a pair of round jacks and the round jacks have got these round blades to them instead of my um, regular blade. When I go and pull on the ball what will happen is if I use a regular pair of jacks on it it's going to go and make a neck and it's going to want to go and break there. The round jacks because they've got this profile as I go and work on this shape it'll go and create a rounded neck. Um, so instead of creating a really really um, really well-defined crease it'll create a really kind of softly sloping crease. On this shape, when I go and heat this shape up, depending on when I blow, I can go and get the different um, styles of, um, of bowls. Early in my heat, if I go and blow into my shape and I keep it level, the bowl will go, go and get fatter. Um, later on in my heat, if I go and take, take a heat and I go and pull, pull my stem, the whole thing will go and get narrow and it'll start to form a, a more narrow champagne flute. Okay, Boogie, you want to go and drop me a cookie? Oh, man. You don't have to make that part out of crystal. Oh, I don't? No. Make a, make a cone out of it. Here, here, you better give me that. You're going to take forever. Meet me over at the, um, meet me over at the, so the TAs will bring you guys a foot, the foot is made out of a separate piece of glass called a cookie. 
you guys take a look at the diagram, you guys can, can take notes with it. When I go to, um, to aim with it, I'm going to aim with my diamond shears. I'm going to go and touch the cookie, and I'm going to go and turn it. And what I want to do is I want to see if I'm on center. If I'm not on center, I can go and push this around a little bit. Once I am on center, I'm going to go ahead and push down, and I want to go and push um, the um, cookie all the way up onto that ball. I'll take a flash heat. Paddle. Paddle. I'll go ahead and heat the cookie in and then I'm just going to go and move the cookie back over the ball. On. Push hard. Push hard. Push hard. Push hard. Push hard. Push hard. Push. 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 Good. And off. And with Boogie's help, I'm going to go and smash my cookie flat. Punty. So with this shape, because my shape has got this long, slender um, stem, it's really, really delicate, really difficult to go and, um, and punty myself. So I'm going to have one of the TAs go and bring me a punty here at the bench. Um, when they go and bring me a punty here at the bench, I'm going to go and apply it using uh, my tweezers instead of the file. I'm going to take a couple of flash heats and I just want to go and let my foot have a chance to cool down. Boogie. Ooh, that's a little hot. Well, I don't care if it's too hot. <laughs> that's not going to be my problem. <laughs> to tap it off, I'm going to go and apply a drop of water with my um, with my tweezers. I just want to go and give it a little tap, a break free. I'm going to go and warm up my tweezers, and I'm going to go and push my um, my um, my my blowpipe all the way to the end of the rails, and Boogie will heat it back up again, and he'll bring it back to me. Okay, but this way I can go and stay at the bench, and I don't have to go and run around all over the glass shop to go and get this punty on here. Can you go and put out the dark teal green and make me a lip wrap? Yep. It's opaque. It's um, it's transparent. It's a dark. Oh, it's right. It's out of here. Oh, the pure green is fine.
You guys can go and apply a wrap at any time. Doesn't necessarily need to be on an unformed gather. Where's my jack? Ready for me, Boogie? You ready? Boogie, you ready? What you got? You have one coating on there? You got two? Okay. Let's see it. Shape it up, go. Give it a roll. Give it a roll. Hurry. Give it a roll. Give it a roll on the marver. Okay, heat it. Here, 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 here. Right here. Okay, bring it. Bring it level. Level, level, level. Close your eyes. You're helping me. To remove the punty, to remove this punty, I'm going to remove it a slightly different way. So why don't you guys come on up here, bring your notes with you. Torch, 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 come on. When I go and remove this punty, I'm going to heat up the punty with a torch, and I want to go and get it moving. It's going to take a couple of flashies. And I want to go and get my punty hotter than my piece. And I want to go and get some movement in it. So remember when we were saying that one of the properties of glass is that it's got what's called brittleness? So that property of glass is with glass even when the glass 
is hot. So even though my glass is in motion and it's still hot, it's still brittle. So when I go and apply water to it and I start that crack, Robert, I can go and propagate that crack. And even though I've got a connection joint that's larger than my stem, I can go and break it free of the glass. Okay, that's all for you guys today. Thanks for staying, staying, sticking around. Okay, great, thanks. You gotta work on your speed, dude. Yeah, You're right. like picking up those bits like glacially. So, you know, nobody's gonna go and see the moil. You don't need to get frit on there. Point down, okay? Get just a, enough on the moil that you can. Don't push through it, pull back a little bit so that the glass stays off of there. Okay. okay. But if you do this, then you know, you're just collecting glass on the moil and frit on the moil, no one's gonna see it. The yeah. glass totally getting ice cold uh, while you're doing it. It's getting totally cold. Okay. And you're and you know you're you're just kind of going along and that's great for when you're blowing glass. <laughs> but we do not have time Understood. you know I don't have time for you to go and take your time, you know, getting all of that frit. Okay, okay. Okay. And so, so when I pick up that color just do it one pass and get out? No. So one pass and get out because you're not gonna go and pick up any more glass when you go and do that pass. So when I go in, I got my gather. I'm gonna go and roll around. I might get a little bit on the moil. That's it. I'm gonna go and take a heat. Okay, because if I go and roll anymore, there's just cold glass on top of hot glass. No more is gonna stick. So I'm gonna go and heat. I'm just gonna go and wait for, for the, the, um, the color just to kind of like roll over a little bit. I can come right back. Same thing, I'm just gonna go and roll into it. Take another heat. And that's the heat that I'm gonna go and take to, um, to go and um, start to heat everything in. When you go and make the taper, it, the taper okay. is like yeah. the handle. It's not perfectly symmetrical. <laughs> no one is gonna notice. It's gonna get stretched out, okay? But what is important is the heat. So if you are trying to go and make the perfect little cone, the only thing that's happening is it's getting and the glory hole heats from the outside, yeah. outside in. Yeah. Okay, so we need the inside to be hot. And you see how like I'm not jamming this into the burner? It's because I don't want the moil to get too hot. I see. So that the glass doesn't come flying off of here. I want to go and hit the tip so that the tip stays pointy because I can't go and roll this way and work towards the tip and make a tip. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right. And then I'm ready to go.